This video is sponsored by Incogni. Hi everyone, Ta here. Last year, when I compared the multitasking capabilities between the Galaxy Tab and the iPad Pro, the Galaxy Tab had two features that Apple didn't really have an answer for, Samsung DeX and proper external monitor support. Well, fast forward to 2023, Happy New Year, by the way, and thanks to iPadOS 16, the iPad now has a new multitasking mode called Stage Manager, which brings along with it proper external monitor support. Today, I want to share my experience with Stage Manager and how I think it stacks up against Samsung DeX. First of all, not every iPad supports Stage Manager. These are the only models that currently do. So if you have the fourth generation iPad Air and want Stage Manager, well then I guess it's time for a trip to the Apple Store. To enable it, you just swipe down from the top right of the screen to open Control Center and then tap the Stage Manager icon right here. Before we do anything else, head into the Settings app, tap on Display and Brightness, scroll down to Display Zoom, and switch it to More Space. This basically zooms the display out and allows you to fit more content onto the tablet screen. The iPad will automatically restart to apply the change. All right, so let me give you a quick rundown of Stage Manager in case it's your first time. So when you tap on an app now, it opens in this floating window that you can actually resize. Some apps give you a lot of flexibility in terms of window size, while others not so much or in some cases not at all. To the left here, you'll see a list of your recent apps that you can quickly switch to with a tap. And you, of course, still have your dock plus access to all your apps in the app library. Oh, and if you're wondering, yes, Stage Manager works in portrait mode too. Likely, the coolest part of all of this is the ability to group apps together and create a workspace that suits your workflow. Your groups will stay together and you can quickly jump between them, which is a nice touch. There's a few ways to add apps to a group. You can tap the three dots at the top of the window, choose add another window, and then pick from one of your recent apps. You can select an app from the recent app list on the left and drag it to the center of the screen. The same thing can be done with an app from the dock or the app library. So with Stage Manager, you can have up to a total of four overlapping apps active at the same time. While you can't technically resize and reposition each app window, you don't quite get complete freedom when it comes to the layout. For example, if I try to place this window down here, you'll see that it automatically snaps back up to a higher position above the dock. It can feel very unpredictable at first, but I kind of get why they do it though because it sort of simplifies things and keeps every app window easily accessible at all times. It basically tries to keep everything centered and contained inside this stage area here. Now, if you're like me, you're probably thinking that having the recent app list and dock visible at all times is a complete waste of space. While you can full screen an app fairly easily, Thankfully, Apple gives you the option to hide both in the settings, so you can utilize the entire iPad display for your apps with both the dock and recent app list being just a swipe away to bring back up. Honestly, if you're working strictly off the iPad alone, I think the traditional multitasking with split screen and slide over windows feels a little more intuitive than Stage Manager. But hey, having options is always a good thing. Moving on to what I was really excited for, proper external monitor support. For Stage Manager to actually launch on an external display, you do need to have a keyboard, a mouse, or trackpad connected. If you've got the Magic Keyboard for an iPad Pro, then that should work fine too. But yeah, you gotta have some sort of mouse and keyboard combo for it to work. Samsung has a really cool workaround for this with DeX. They allow you to use the Galaxy Tab itself as a trackpad and also have the software keyboard pop up whenever it's needed. The trackpad works surprisingly well and gets the job done for those situations where you don't have a keyboard or mouse available. Yeah, Apple should totally steal this concept because it's a really good idea. Something that shouldn't be stolen is your personal information. Let me tell you how today's sponsor, Incogni, aims to help. After signing up for Incogni, I was shocked at how many data brokers had info about me, which totally explains why I get so much targeted spam that always has me thinking, how they get my number? There's a good chance that your personal information is being sold online right now without you even knowing it. Combine that with data breaches and we've got a real problem. So you do have the right to request that data brokers delete what info they have on you, but that will take forever to do manually. Instead, just sign up for Incogni and grant them the right to work for you. They'll reach out to data brokers on your behalf request your personal data removal, and deal with any objections. Incogni will do this on a regular basis to ensure they don't get your data again. The whole process is automated. You don't have to do
do a single thing. The first 100 people to use code Huen at the link below will get 20% off of Incogni. It's available risk-free for 30 days. Try it out. If you're not happy, get a full refund. Proper external monitor support has been one of the things that I've been wanting on my iPad for the longest time. Now, I know the typical iPad user probably won't even care about plugging their iPad into a monitor, but for a product with the word Pro in its name, it took way too long. Also, for those who want to make the iPad their only computing device, this is definitely a move in the right direction. The whole iPad desk setup concept can actually work now. Connecting to a display opens up the ability to have an extra four apps active, bringing the grand total to eight apps, four on the iPad and another four on the external display. You can arrange, resize, and move around app windows the same way you can on the iPad screen. It also unfortunately has the same window snapping limitations, which I was hoping wouldn't be the case. Comparing this to Samsung DeX, there are some things that I like and some things that I don't like. Let's start with the not so good stuff first. The entire UI on my ultra wide monitor just looks really big and bloated. It scales a lot better on Apple's studio display. So if you've got one of those laying around, then I guess that's not a problem. In my opinion, Samsung DeX looks a little more professional and refined, at least on my ultra wide monitor. Next, it's a minor thing, but I'm not a fan of the mouse cursor. This blob looks cool on the iPad, but on a monitor, I'd prefer an actual pointer. The forward and back buttons on my mouse also don't work on the iPad, like at all. It's such a big part of my productivity and workflow that not having an easy way to program them in these settings, yeah, I miss it immediately. Stage Manager also doesn't let you select audio output. It automatically defaults to the monitor speakers. Some monitors don't have speakers or just have really crappy ones. So being able to use the great speakers on the iPad Pro would be a nice option to have. On Dex, for example, you can easily select the audio output source. Moving on to the good stuff that I think Stage Manager does better than Dex. First, the iPad Pro can support external displays with pretty high resolutions, supposedly up to 6K. Connecting this to my studio display, which has a 5K resolution, it looks extremely sharp and the refresh rate on the iPad Pro doesn't take a hit either. DeX only currently supports up to a resolution of 1440p on external displays and the refresh rate on the Galaxy Tab will automatically drop down to 60 hertz, which kind of sucks. Second, the display arrangement setting allows you to edit where the iPad is in relation to the screen. This includes positioning above and below the display. So your mouse cursor can properly flow between the two screens if you like using a stacked layout, which I personally do. Dex only had a setting for the right or left side of the monitor for years. To Samsung's credit, they did add bottom placement in the latest One UI update. Third, you can actually drag and drop apps between the external display and iPad, moving them back and forth as needed. That's honestly really cool. Like, just check out how fluid that is. That's not something you can do at all on Samsung Dex. Now, Samsung DeX is pretty much a Windows clone. So in that sense, it's so much easier to just pick up and start using. You have full control over window sizes and you can place them wherever you want. It's just a lot more freedom, you know? Anyone who's used a computer can pick up a Galaxy Tab with DeX and understand how it works right away. Stage Manager, on the other hand, feels like Apple is trying to reinvent a whole new multitasking interface. And because of that, there's definitely going to be a learning curve that will probably turn a lot of people off. I've said it before, but I think Samsung has a real winner with DeX. But it hasn't felt like they've been that motivated to really improve it. Now that the iPad has Stage Manager and more importantly, proper external monitor support, I'm hoping that this will put a little pressure under Samsung to step up their game a bit. The apps, of course, are still the main draw when it comes to the iPad. For video creators like myself, although Android tablets just got LumaFusion, which is solid and a huge win for the platform, the iPad now has DaVinci Resolve. That's a full-blown pro video editing app normally found on Mac and Windows. I've been messing around with it and I'm seriously impressed. I still prefer a MacBook for a lot of other reasons, but you could totally start and run an entire YouTube channel with just an iPad Pro. Brainstorming, drafting scripts, editing videos, even creating thumbnails. You can do it all here and it doesn't feel like too much of a compromise. 
So I don't think Stage Manager is as revolutionary as Apple was hoping it'd be. Like Dex, Stage Manager is completely optional. So if you're fine with the tried and true multitasking of the iPad that's been around for years or just hate change in general, then you can just completely ignore it. After using it for a few weeks, I still find myself preferring the original iPad multitasking when working straight off the iPad. It feels a little more at home once you plug into a separate monitor and pair it with a keyboard plus mouse. So I'm glad we can finally do that properly. Yeah, I don't know. I do like Stage Manager in that it shows that Apple is willing to try new things. Hate it or love it, Apple is always going to do things their way. It's not perfect, but it's a really good starting point and I'm looking forward to seeing how they build on it. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Until the next one, I'm out of here. Bye!